All right. Well, welcome, guys, to another podcast episode. Uh, this is podcast number. I forgot to look it up again. I said the first time we did this, the last time we did this, I should have looked up what number this actually was, and I still didn't. But this is but the second episode with the three of us together uh, doing this sort of format again. So we'll call it episode two. Uh, last episode, we took a look at robots, and we set out to determine whether robots were good or evil. If you missed that episode, you can check it out. It's uh, on YouTube at this point. Um, I think I posted on social when I shared it that we had started off that episode to try to figure out whether robots were good or evil, and uh, by the end of the episode, I think we've landed on we had no idea what robots were. So. That went about exactly as expected, so I expect nothing less this time around, but I said we would do it again, and we are here. So second round of this format, and hopefully we can keep this going, because this is fun. Uh, this episode, we're going to be taking a look at VR, XR, AR, LR, BR, LMNOPR. Okay, those last few aren't things, but uh, a lot of acronyms that all sort of amount to virtual reality, augmented reality, extended reality, and whether or not those are, at this point, useful for SOLIDWORKS users. At least that's gonna be our goal. So uh, we'll take a look at some examples that we have uh, of that sort of realm, and uh, hopefully by the end, make a decision on whether we think it's uh, useful for us or just cool, or what we should be doing with it. So um, again, we've got the three of us. I'm Jesse, uh, Franco, and Jim. And uh, I guess we'll get this episode kicked off. Uh, who wants right. to start with something something cool? Uh, I, I'll start. I guess probably the first thing we need to talk about is uh, we need to define all those acronyms that you started off with, right? I, I'd like to hear your definition of elemental PR, actually. Uh, <laughs> we'll but, add that to the end. Yeah, yeah, I think you might have been making that one up. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, first of all, extended reality, that's uh, that's going to refer to anything real and virtual environment, uh, like wearables. Think of like uh, like the, the Google Glass or, you know, whatever the next type of... Uh, you might have just dated yourself with that reference, right? I know, right? <laughs> One of our customers, though, just developed, uh, just developed some, or is developing some wearable technology, View 6, based out of Rochester, New York. And, uh, the, sure. So shout out to you guys if you're listening. Yeah, great group, um, guys. Yeah, they really are. Cool, really cool stuff, too. Yep. Awesome facility, too. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's XR. Basically, XR stands for anything reality. So vir- it's kind of the all-encompassing thing. Uh, virtual reality is uh, is the, the goggles, right? The, the things you wear in your head and you can't see out. Um, <clears throat> HTC has some, um, uh, you know, there, there's a bunch of different, different ones that you can buy on the market. And they're used... Uh, for me, I think they're used mostly for like gaming, but it's all computer generated or synthetic um, content, right? No real content, no real life stuff. Even like a recording is considered synthetic. Yeah, you, just, you just have to fight the uh, crypto miners for a quality video card to run one of those. <laughs> that's so, very, uh, very true. That's an entirely other discussion there. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe next time we'll talk about crypto and SolidWorks. <laughs> Um, augmented reality, that's probably one of my favorite ones, actually, is, uh, is augmented reality. And that's where you hold up a camera or, you know, your phone or something, and it, it projects virtual things onto the real world. And that's really cool. There's some really cool videos out on the web that, uh, of that and of the technology with, with that. And that's, that's really neat. That, that's personally my favorite is augmented reality. Uh, there's some in some historical sites where you hold up your iPad to like some ruins or something in it. It'll show you the what it used to look like in antiquity and things like that. I think that's really neat for, as a learning tool, at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the 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 VR and, and, and AR stuff I, I've seen more familiarity with uh, the whole kind of, you know, like you said, XR being whatever reality. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to see what comes. Um, yeah. It's, there's people with crazy ideas out there, or I should say they seem crazy at the time, and then when they come to reality, it's like, this is awesome. So yep. I think the technology we have today, though, um, out of all of them, my favorite is probably the uh, VR, and, and that's mostly because I really, really want a VR headset so I can have my driving simulator more complete. 
I did the whole thing with multiple monitors and, and it, it, it just never felt the same. Um, but uh, the, the VR headsets now and the fact that they're affordable uh, for the most part uh, have been a great influence on people going that route with their racing or driving simulators. And for car guys like me, it's awesome to be able to pretend I have a cool car <laughs> without even that, leaving the house. After that, you'll need a platform with all kinds of hydraulics on it. And mm. I'll come over and spritz you when it's raining in the sim. There you go. It's, yeah, it, it does tend to snowball uh, because <laughs> it was like at first a single monitor was cool. And then I was like, well, I really, if I had three, I could look out the windows. And yeah, the whole full motion sim stuff. And yeah, it so, definitely escalates out of control quickly. Yeah. And I was just going to say that we've, again, sort of diverged off our path here. But I actually didn't even think of that part of hardware sort of playing in a role in that. Um, that whole the environment, feeling. right? Like at UB, yeah. we had a we had a driving simulator that they built like that. I think it was all Moog components. Um, that was like part of a car and you know a big screen and whatever, and it would actually move you around. But I've seen them do it with robots. Back connection back to our last mm -hmm. episode, um, where you're actually getting like the inertia feel of things like that. Um, in setting up for this this episode, I didn't really really think about that whole side of building environments that physically do things for you in combination with the software. Well, and and I, I was telling, I can't remember somebody about this the other day, but the uh, at, at SolidWorks Corporate, they had, you know, their VR cave and then kind of their second generation of that turned into uh, one of the headsets with motion tracking. Mm -hmm. So you can walk around a scene and, you know, walk into a wall or a chair fall down but uh you know it, it tracked where your body was in in relative to the scene that you were in which is to me just mind-blowing yeah and yeah. as com oh go ahead no go ahead franco I, I was gonna say as computer you know hardware and software advances it's only to get more and more realistic you know how how long till we get into the the for all you trekkies out there you know like the holodeck uh, like on Star Trek, you know, it's it's not that far off. And and that kind of gets into the mixed reality. It's the last one we're defining. And that's kind of a, an overlay of, of fake content or, or virtual reality content overlaid into the real world. So it, the real world, world objects can get in front of or behind uh, virtual objects or vice versa, right? The virtual objects can hide behind things and the computer can can recognize real world objects and, and render them in real time in this virtual environment. And that's kind of what we saw at the SOLIDWORKS place a little bit. And it's kind of what where they were going with the simulations and, and things. So it's, I, I can't wait to see where it goes, you know, considering where it was even 10, 15 years ago, uh, where it's gonna go in the next 10 years is, is gonna be crazy. Yeah, for sure. Um, along those same lines of the, the hardware side of this whole thing, um, you know, we're a geometric reseller, and one of the devices that they have is like a, um, that's like a stylus almost, but it's like connected to an arm, uh, so it actually has like haptic feedback. So you're like hmm. working with, um, with the, you know, as you're sculpting something on the computer, you're like feeling like you're really touching clay or something as you're working with your model, which is super cool. And I, I, we might have even mentioned it with. Uh, in our last episode, I don't remember, but somebody, and I want to say that it's Festo, but I could be wrong about that, um, has something similar to that where they've got the uh, robot that as you're moving the robot, you have a glove or something that you can feel like what the robot is feeling with that haptic feedback and stuff like that. Um, hmm. So that's that's cool. I, I really didn't think about that whole physical side. I mean, obviously people are because they're building products for it, um, but I didn't even think of that as we were setting this up. That that whole side of it is really interesting. Yeah, and I mean, to kind of change to the augmented reality stuff a little bit, I, I've seen and again, back at the SolidWorks R&D section there, the, uh, the model of the heart where you put the glasses on and it kind of floats there in front of you and you can pick it apart and dissect it, mm -hmm. but you know, you're not wearing a, a enclosed headset. You're just wearing like an, an AR headset type thing. Uh, back to the, you know, like Google Glass or the, um, what was that other one that they, it was more of a helmet shaped one with the motorcycle example. Oh yeah. Uh, hmm. no can't, I, can't, I can't remember the name of it, but yeah. sa same deal, right? I mean, you're in the environment and you're seeing all the aspects except, you know, 
the ruins are in perfect shape again because somebody reconstructed them, which is sounds super cool for you know the travel and stuff or lack thereof or lack thereof since right. this is yeah the time which Franco maybe you can elaborate a little bit on your uh, virtual trips that you've done through the headset that you bought for your son <laughs> yes so uh, so yeah I, I, I bought my son a gal- um, what is an oculus quest and I end up using it more than he does just because it's really cool and a lot of times I just end up watching uh, 360 YouTube videos of you know fighter pilots you know doing their formation like the the blue angels doing their formation and you're just looking around and uh, it's, it's pretty cool and there's a lot of YouTube content um, for for the oculus stuff and a lot of the games and and things like that there's the one that really stands out is there's a rock climbing game where you're like free climbing on oh. these cliffs and you can look down and it it's very disorienting that you can look down and it, it looks like if you let go you're gonna fall and no, you can see you know you can see your hands and and it tracks your hands and everything it's pretty cool um, luckily someone else's hands because i would actually fall off yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like walking out in the uh, the tower there in Chicago and looking down through the glass floor. Yep. <laughs> you know you're not going to fall, but you can't help that feeling. <laughs> but you yep. might. But the good thing is with the headset, you know you're not going to fall. If you're going to fall, you're going to fall. You know, I'm only four foot six, so I'm only going to fall four <laughs> feet. Um, um, yeah, I, I was going to say, you know you're not going to fall, but I've seen plenty <laughs> of videos on YouTube of people just completely wiping out and having thinking they're going to fall so that is probably not entirely the case it's, that's it's true. pretty that's pretty true. convincing some of them that's what happened happened in my head here i was you know walking around with my headset on and just <laughs> down the stairs yeah <laughs> took a header it happens. Believe it. um so i kind of let's let's go back to to where we need to be going um virtualization of of cad right that's yeah. that's kind of the next step i i feel Right? How long until you can put yourself at the origin of your SolidWorks model or, or somewhere in your SolidWorks model or set up a camera view and then just plug in and put your headset on and, and look around? There's, there's already software out there that, that does that in, you know, I have the, the cheap one, right? The Quest is the, the relatively inexpensive one. It was only a couple hundred bucks. And there's already software that can take in STLs or CAD, some CAD models and you can kind of look around them and and move around. I actually have a video that I'm going to share here. Um, probably should have queued it up before I said anything. So, <laughs> well, we'll so you're saying we'll like <laughs> you're saying like stand in an environment with your CAD model to look around it, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's. I feel like that's the next logical step for CAD, right? Where you can give this headset to someone who doesn't really understand. 2D to 3D where they're looking at a 2D screen even though there's a 3D object in there and you know they just um, they, they're just looking at you know it's not real to them whereas if you put a headset on them and they can turn their head and, and look around think of like a building more more architectural than than mechanical sometimes but um, you know you look around and you stand in a room and and you see things like that so that, that's kind of what I'm thinking obviously you guys are entitled to your own opinions but mine's the right one so <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i think the three of us have been in this space for long enough to know that seeing is definitely believing there is definitely a, a mental block that a lot of people have and especially yeah. like you said if they're not used to looking at prints or you know even at a model sometimes it's just and even for people who are experienced with it just being able to see something as it's going to look is so powerful you know, so something like this i mean even we see it with just the rendering side of things you make something look photorealistic or put it in its environment it's like oh okay i understand this so much better it's so much easier to understand what, mm-hmm. what it's supposed to do so that yep. that's like the player through the quest then that yep so this is an app i downloaded through the quest i don't remember what the app is called uh but this is the car for those of you who use solidworks visualize this is just a demo file of the the car that they have in there and this is just an output of, v, I believe it was a VRML that I outputted out of Visualize and imported it into this uh, this environment. And this is me just, you know, I'm using the controllers on the hand, on the handles just to move around. And then as I move my head, you can kind of see 
see it move around hmm. and you can explore different areas of the model and and see things from a from a different angle so this is this is really cool this was and again this was free software so i'm sure for paid software um once if anyone out there knows or has any that that they you know t type it in the chat so if you guys know of anything let us know yeah paid software or you know if it's coupled with that motion tracking uh like we saw with the mm -hmm. oculus there you can uh walk around the scene without having to use the controller uh, but um I, yeah. I think i just caused myself more work this weekend because i've i've done a 360 photosphere rendering out of visualize the solidworks visualize before of my garage so i could put it in a headset and just look around from a static position but this gives the ability to walk around that space which is going to be a completely different uh feeling trying to visualize for me yeah and um that i had one of the examples that i had uh franco can i take over here yeah go ahead um one of the examples that i had was kind of along that line um where uh, i think uh mike sandy uh, tagged me in this company on linkedin a little bit ago um but this company is called cavernous and there's a, a bunch of different companies that are kind of working on something like this but um this concept is is cool to me and it's a cool use case and sort of fits um our style of working but um this is sort of a, a way that you'll end up so this is using unity unity and unreal engine but um this is a sort of building um they, they have a bunch of different uh styles of working but this one is interesting to me in that you have like avatar is kind of what jim was just mentioning mm -hmm. there where um, you're sort of in a room together, in a design together, um, where you can have a meeting, right? You're having a, a virtual meeting like we are right now, but you're in a 3D space that may or may not exist, right? This could be a design review or something like that, where you're in the space together, uh, and then you have some, you know, extra tools built in here for looking at different things. But um, it's a it's a whole virtual environment that you're in and you're whoever you know whatever stakeholders need need to be in as avatars, and you can communicate and you know look around and move around as if you were actually there, and preview and say okay well I, you know I like this aspect of the design or whatever. Um, so I think that this kind of thing is really going to change the way that meetings happen um, going forward once these kind of uh, systems get going because this is just so much easier to make sure everybody's on the same page if you're all looking like right you're all looking at exactly the same you're there as if it was real you're there um, all together uh, so I feel like this is going to clear up so much miscommunication and things like that going going forward when these types of systems really get rolling wow that's really cool yeah and I mean, Unity and Unreal are just the gaming engines right from that they're just making use of right yep this is just sort of piggybacks yeah so that's the it, ec, this cavernous software exports sort of i don't know exactly how it exports but it's it's working off of the the backbone of unity or unreal in this case and yeah unity and unreal they both started as gaming platforms but i think they're expanding well beyond that especially now uh, i think they're they're into the motion pictures and and you know, cut scenes and videos on YouTube and things like that. I, my kids are talking about Unity all the time. They want to learn to program in Unity and, you know, because they know that's the future. So yeah. it's, yeah, and I don't know sure. what, I don't know what better global environment to, to push virtualization than the one we're in right now. Did, <laughs> yeah. Did they just put a TV in the virtual scene? Yeah, it's like that cool? So they, they brought in a browser basically. So they're like, you know, discussing something. They're screen sharing, but in 3D, which is pretty cool. That's crazy. Yeah, really neat system. I don't know too much about this particular system, actually, uh, because I just kind of learned about it a little while ago. Uh, so I've just sort of been poking into it here and there, but really neat stuff. Yeah, and I mean, I'm assuming this could be pretty much any CAD model, you know, whether it's from an architectural software, SolidWorks, whatever. Right, yeah you're just in that environment so you could be we, we could be standing outside of this room looking at the you know building or the big machine that your company builds from the outside walking around it together exactly exactly 
Yeah, really cool. Yeah, so speaking of architecture, um, I'm gonna jump in again here yeah. and share my screen. Uh, this is from February of 2019, and uh, this is the Google Maps AR. I don't know where they're at, where they're at, at this point. Uh, you know, obviously this was two years ago, but um, here we got this guy who is Google Maps, right, on his phone. That's where we use Google Maps, and we use it for navigation and all sorts of other things. This one is, it's actually, it senses different areas using Google Street View, so it shows you different things in AR. So you wanna talk about architecture and, and, and nets, navigating cities and even navigating public spaces, you know, public buildings and things like that. Uh, this will actually show you where you need to be and where you need to go and this video was better when I wasn't trying to talk to it <laughs> live, but um, it actually picks out, there's some section, there's a, of course now I can't find Well, it. think about think about touring in a new city and if somebody's gone through and set up, you know, all the little key points to look at as you're walking, you can yeah. click on it probably and expand and read about the things there. Yeah, virtual tours and whatever. Yep. Yeah. Oh, there you go, That's this is what I wanted to show. And it basically picks up using, because it has this street view data, it picks up points on the buildings so it, it can, to like probably the inch, can tell you where you are and that's how it keyframes the, the augmented reality. And so it's it's much more accurate even than, than Google Maps is. With the GPS, which is I think a couple of feet, this would be to the inch probably because of all the key points that it picks out. Right. And that, that's just on your phone. You know, you don't need any crazy special hardware for that. Yeah, so um, this reminds me back to what you were saying at the beginning um, with your your iPad or whatever. You're, you're looking at something um, to a video that I think, Franco, you showed me ages ago. Um, and that is an, from another one of our um, customers. But the Corning videos yep. that they came out with ages ago and you guys probably have these on your list too um but the day made of glass videos were the coolest things i have seen they're still to this day they hold up so well um and you were talking about you know exhibits or whatever that where you're going through some site and then you, you're getting information like that 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 uh video that you just showed is kind of the same uh same thing i was just talking to my dad about this uh weekend or two ago uh, because he was talking about Civil War battle sites and things like that. And I was saying how cool it's going to be, you know, once all of those get set up, that you can just hold up your your device and, you know, get a video reenactment or, what you know, whatever kind of overlay of information that you want. Um, but these videos that they came out with, I, I can't play the whole thing, but um, these were such a cool string of examples of how they see it actually working you know at some point here in the future and obviously this one was 2012 but the one before that was even a year before so these were a ways back um, but i thought they did such an awesome job of showing and obviously through their their products um, how they think their products are going to make this happen um, but i really feel like these were a cool um, look forward as to how like we've always had that kind of like Jarvis sci-fi idea of all of these things happening, um, but I think these, you know, this, these couple of videos and things like this were some of the the early ones. Like, this is how we're actually going to do it and get there, uh, or some of the ideas on how we might do it. And uh, I just love these videos; they're so cool. Yep. So when I said AR was my favorite, this is why I said it. This yeah. specifically, this video and the, you yeah. know the companion video out of it. Uh, this is why. <laughs> so I I. I I was going to say I liked VR better, but uh, I, I f completely forgot about this video because we had watched it so long ago. And yeah. uh, I think AR probably has better day-to-day -day life usages, but yeah. VR is going to be more for like the business side of stuff. Although if the AR gets to the point where you can be having your virtual meeting standing like in a room, it, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, It, it, it could be anything's possible which is the is the awesome part and yeah like you'd mentioned before we have customers and and just people that in the industry in general that are trying to push it further um i know you, you had mentioned view six earlier but uh i'm pretty well I used to be a half decent pilot of a drone but uh you know they were 
the, the the goggles, the fat shark goggles that are encapsulated are kind of annoying to wear when you're flying and you can't see outside of them. And, you know, the companies are trying to develop uh, more AR type goggles where you can see what's in front of you, but you can also see what the drone's seeing at the same time, uh, which is, is super cool because half of the battle is you end up looking like up in the sky flying around and look silly because you don't realize that your head's tilted up when you're flying through the through the goggles after a while but uh or down i'm famous for just staring down at the controller <laughs> and then i crash a whole nother story so i want i wanted to talk about you know where we are now um so i pulled up this video this is <laughs> i did the math this is from eight years ago this is insane uh, e-drawings, actually, you know, circling back to the SolidWorks uh, ecosystem. This was eight years ago. E-drawings came out with their augmented reality, and um, it, it, you just print out this QR code and you set it down on a desk or something, and e-drawings can can show you your model in augmented reality. So I mean, th this and then again, this is eight years ago. This is a technology where it's eight years old, and imagine you know what we can be doing now. And I know with Visualize, we can do much, much more than this. You know, e-drawings kind of stopped here because this is basically all you would need in, in the e-drawings platform. But with Visualize, you can do the 360 walkthroughs and you can do the video walkthroughs and the and render your environment. And Jim, I know you did your garage a couple of years ago. Uh, we, we were talking about that the other day. And well, it's just, so these are the more practical versions of it, I think. I, I know we talked about this the other day, but I do still want to try to print a QR code out that's about four foot and stick it in my yard so I can visualize like an entire shop in the backyard. Uh, to I'm, I'm more curious if it'll work at this point than anything, but uh, it would be super cool to be able to have an augmented view of what a building would look like in within my yard. So um, maybe if that ever happens. I say I want to do a lot of things that sound awesome, and then <laughs> you start doing it, and it's like, yeah, this is too hard, and then I just resort to mowing the lawn. <laughs> it's all about what you have to do versus what you want to do, right? Yep. So let's talk about then maybe a total view of use cases as far as the CAD person goes for this maybe now slash in the future. So obviously we've talked a lot about just visualizing a product right you you make something model it up in solidworks and we want to see what it looks like where it's supposed to go um maybe in a, some kind of ar fashion uh, that's pretty cool that's pretty useful i've used that myself in the past and you know made a shelf or whatever and i wanted to see what it was going to look like in the wall so i just loaded it on my phone and e-drawings and take a look at it and see what it's going to look like there um, so i think that definitely has uses and that's available like you said apparently eight years ago i can't believe that was eight years ago um <laughs> But that's, you know, those kind of things are there and they work. Um, we talked about virtual meetings. I still think that's a that's a really cool thing, um, really viable option for, like I said, trying to eliminate some of the miscommunication that can easily happen in other forms of communication. Um, one we haven't talked about is what do we think about actually modeling in a VR environment, maybe with hand tracking or with devices or things like that, um, actually building our models or assembling our models or something like that um, may be easier with a haptic device of some kind. But um, do you guys think at some point in the future we'll be just gesturing around building in SolidWorks with our hands rather than some kind of input device? I, I don't see why not. Uh, like a Tony Stark Avengers type, type thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I definitely see that. I mean, the, the Quest has a couple programs that kind of let you do that. You can sculpt some things and, and kind of push and pull them around. It has some, some room to grow. Obviously, it's still kind of in the ground floor and there's, there's a lot more enhancements to be made, but I don't see why not. I mean, it, right now, and when I, when I teach essentials classes, a lot of times, um, I talk about the mouse, right? We have our mouse that's moving along our desk and that's on a 2D plane, right? The desk is a 2D plane, but we're manipulating a 3D geometry in our in the computer, in the virtual environment. And it's just an awkward input for it. Um, to your point, Jess, the, the haptic, uh, <clears throat> you know, on the arm, right? At least that's in 3D space, but our mice, they're, they're on 2D plane and, and trying to manipulate something in 3D on a 2D plane is just, it's inefficient and it's not natural. And, and you know, obviously, 
any of us that have been using SOLIDWORKS for any amount of time, or any CAD software, or any 3D CAD software for any amount of time, we've gotten used to it. But it's it's unnatural. You know, you try to teach kids to you manipulate something 3D with a 2D mouse, and it's it takes a little bit of time because it's not you know you're not used to it as humans. That's not how we're made to input things. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I I don't. Apparently, I've never sat in one of your essentials courses at that point in time, but um, but that's a that's a good analogy. One I should probably steal, but um, there are, we do have devices like the I've got my 3D connection mouse next to me that have sort of 3D motion in the the joystick or the the puck or whatever um, that sort of bridge that gap a little bit too. Obviously, they take a little bit of getting used to, but I've been using mine a lot in the past couple of months actually, and it's it is once you get the hang of you know the actually controlling it is really intuitive in comparison to a, a mouse but i didn't really think about that and that you really are lacking a degree of freedom with your mouse so it is more it's going to naturally be more clumsy yeah so i mean it's i i, I can't wait I, I can't wait to see what they come up with cuz you know for two generations now maybe we've we've been used to the same input to a computer and you know be interested to see what ends up happening. Yeah. I mean, what was it, CSI Miami or you know any of those shows? They always have kind of the touchscreen tabletop things, and I mean SolidWorks has touch capabilities that we've played with, but I, I don't think the hardware is caught up to it yet. Uh, get, getting a huge touch, you know, monitor is not very cost effective at this point. But um, Jesse, you've used the like the tablets mm-hmm. to model with, right? With some of the newer. Uh, 3D experience apps and stuff? Yeah, yeah, I have a couple Wacom tablets that I have mounted my desk, um, and I do use those from time to time, and those are pretty cool. Uh, generally, I turn the touch off and just use the stylus because my, my fat sausage fingers, and I'm always <laughs> bumping things that I don't mean to. Um, but uh, but yeah, that is that is really cool. Um, I think, is it Dell that has that giant um, yeah. screen with the, they have like a little puck thing that they use too? Yeah, um, so. Yeah. Uh, I was talking to somebody at 3D Experience World, maybe well, it's got to be a couple of years ago at this point, um, that had, well, that was using one of those um, alongside with SolidWorks Cam, and they said it cut the amount of time way down because there's just inherently a lot of mouse travel in the work that they were doing, uh, bouncing back and forth between you know looking at their simulation and making changes in the Cam system, um, where they have everything in front of them they can kind of tap back and forth with two hands um and they were saying that the touch system was really really nice um in that regard and i can i can see that i can see it taking a little bit of getting used to right it's still a 2d plane like frankly you were just mentioning but uh it is a little bit more accessible where the the mouse travel and they've done a great job in the past handful of years of reducing mouse travel and in, in solidworks but only if you use the shortcuts and systems and all of that right where a big screen like this if you're just tapping away with both hands you've got a lot more suddenly a lot more mobility um so that that is pretty cool i would love to try one of those systems and just see how it works i wonder if like putting a headset on is more immersive than you know sitting at the desk staring at a monitor i mean technically you're not moving around the object you're still going to rotate the object on the screen within the headset but yeah you're kind of immersed in that scene which is, is, I think, a big part of the, the VR side is that you're cutting out all the background and focusing only on that. And then if you're using like the two hand touch or a, whatever to, to model, uh, that might be a really cool experience. And yeah. I know we've seen the um, those multi-directional treadmills for people oh, yeah. with VR headsets. Yeah. So you can walk in any direction and you get the physical aspect of that walking and Jesse will come spritz you with some water <laughs> in the rain, but. Step in a puddle. That's super cool. Um, yeah. Curious. I, I, for the record, I did find my 360 uh, rendering that I did of the garage. Oh, nice. But um, it's just a static image. So let me uh, see if I can figure out how to use my computer. So this was just a static, like, photospheric rendering to use in, I think Franco had, you had, like, what, the little cardboard uh, yeah. things, yeah, and you cool. stick a cell phone in it. I mean, that was, what, five or six years ago at this point. Yeah. Um, but, you know, being able to just view it on a computer and kind of pan around, 
and see and, and get a feeling for kind of how that space looked up in there uh, and everything and you know downloaded a lot of models to just kind of visualize but for me this was about understanding light placement and how it would affect because I was able to control the uh, wattage the outputs of the lights I knew the lumens so I could see an idea of how the light would cast on the floor uh, and you know that's kind of a bonus of using that visualized rendering that's going to accurately represent things uh, and then being able to put yourself in the scene um, which now knowing what you showed Franco being able to move with the handsets that would have been super cool to be able to walk around here to, to see it because this is just a fixed point from where my camera was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to say, Jim, the uh, drywall work in this image is a lot better than the drywall yeah, work in the garage was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know, we, we, we use some crown to hide the gaps and a lot of caulk, so don't uh, don't worry too much about that. Well, and the um, the kind of walking around the environment that leads me to, I guess. And my last of the uses that we haven't talked about, and that's like training videos. Um, I think a couple of years ago we had export from Visualize to the NVIDIA Holodeck, which I don't know a whole lot about, but um, I've only you know seen the demo videos and whatever. Um, but something like that, actually, I have one. I have one up. Let me uh, let me play it here. Um, but something like that, like the Holodeck, I think is is really cool for um, the training aspect of things, where you can again set maybe set something up for somebody or show somebody a process or you know in this case they have got avatars in there again um but you can you can set something up to illustrate a process or have them walk through a certain thing and actually try it in a virtual world and they have a lot better understanding of what they're going to need to do when they get to the actual process um so i think training videos alone could be a huge market for this this type of thing I mean, if you're watching just a video with the ability to turn your head and look around the rest of the object, you know, instead of it being static, that's a whole nother level. Yeah. You know, if they're telling you to remove a screw and, you know, it's kind of hard to tell where that screw is relative to the rest of the machine, you can look up or down and see, oh, yeah, okay, that's got to be a huge game changer for uh, training, you know, yeah. new, new staff and whatnot on how to do a project. This looks super crazy, though. Yeah. yeah, very cool. I think I think the idea was this was like a, a real time training or a real time design change after a design review or something like that, um, kind of samples. But yeah, this is absolutely wild. Well, and I mean, take this to the a little bit different direction: sales, right? All the ca ma major car manufacturers now, when they show pictures of your car, they always do a three sixty, uh, not a video, but a three sixty picture of the inside of the car. Yep. So you can pull that up and you can look around and you can kind of almost feel what it feels like sitting in the driver's seat or at least in the middle of the car or something. When I was in the market for my last car, I, I looked in probably a dozen or two dozen cars and was, I was just in the 360 picture and I ruled out some. I'm like, oh, you know what? I don't really like this interior too much. You know, I don't like how this panel looks. And I wouldn't even go look at it. Well, that, uh, that brings up a good point because like um, <clears throat> I was recently looking for houses and there was a, a slew of them that had 3d walkthroughs you know and you could put on a headset you know like the quest or something and, and walk through the house and look around and it was just static images of each room but you know you could click the dot and it'd take you to the next room and then you could look around that's not really even a cad model at all it's just a 360 photo picture you know that i that's still VR, but it's got nothing to do with CAD. Yeah. Um, well, they, and they scanned it with a scanner, but... Yeah, well, I mean, actually, when I was out west a couple weeks ago, and there were people, we went to the Grand Canyon, and we went to a bunch of different uh, sites, and there were people with the 360 cameras just walking around instead of, you know, yeah. noobs like me taking pictures with my cell phone. <laughs> you know, these guys were taking 360 images and just walking around. I don't know if they were taking video or just images, but... You know that technology is very accessible now and then when, you know you, you send that to your loved ones or upload it to youtube and then people could just look at it and pretend they're there or but feel i mean like think there. about all the stuff that you know you can immerse yourself back in that situation much more than a picture ever could right and it's so affordable now to to get that i mean i remember jesse and i talking even franco too like four or five years ago 
360 cameras were almost untouchable. Mm -hmm. Now you can buy one on Amazon for like 30 bucks. You know, it's it's crazy. The quality is different between them, but um, it, it definitely seems like uh, it's readily accessible and available. And, you know, I, I totally, every time I get ready for a trip, I say I'm going to buy one of those cameras and it never happens. But one of these days, probably on All Prime right. Day when they sucker me into something. Yeah. Um, so you said readily accessible and available. So yes. should we try to wrap this up and see uh, if we can come to a conclusion on whether we think this technology is ready for SOLIDWORKS users or is still coming? Or do you guys have any other examples you want to jam in here before we try to make a call on this? Any more um, evidence for the jury? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think the answer is yes to both of those questions. I mean, I think there some of it already is, right? We have the, the visualized 360 rendering and the, the 360 videos that we can make with visualize. We saw Jim uh, did his garage and, and other examples. And, um, you know, who knows what's to come? I think it's only going to get better in the future. And with the 360 or, you know, 360 modeling, maybe fully immersive modeling, who knows if that's coming down the line? Uh, this isn't a, a preview of what's coming in SOLIDWORKS 2022, I promise. <laughs> um, but, you know, who, who knows? I, I think it's it's only going to get better. Yeah, I, I have to agree um, on the point where I think what's here now is useful for the CAD side. Uh, I, I don't think modeling in like a, a AR, VR type environment is really needed yet. I think what is needed, and, and especially with the way things are now, is the ability to take your CAD model and have that kind of um, walk around without going to a trade show and actually walking around the, the item. And the free softwares that are out there do a fine job at it, but you know there are some paid softwares out there that make it much easier, and a company can simply take their machine load it into a Quest headset and mail it off to a customer and they could put it on and walk around it. Like that, that technology is here now. And uh, for me, I think that is what's usable for SOLIDWORKS and CAD customers. Currently, the uh, modeling with two hands like against a screen, I can't wait to be able to do that. I still want my wall to be painted like a TV. I know we talked about that years ago, but yeah, you know, having a touch, touch screen wall would be awesome. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so you two are in agreement. I'm going to go the other way then. I'm going to say no, uh, even though I just said moments ago that I've already used a lot of this stuff and it was pretty helpful. Um, I'm going to say I'm going to say no, um, only because I think the real meat and potatoes of this is yet to come. Um, I think it's not. It, obviously there are things there are aspects of this whole process that work right now um, but I don't think on the whole it's a click of a button kind of a thing um, and I know that's not really our criteria but um, <clears throat> I think a lot of the a lot of the online tools and things like that are set up for a lot of different file formats so there are some hoops you have to jump through there's hardware things that you have to jump through you have to have the hardware available or purchase the hardware or um, try to figure out what that hardware needs to be I don't think it's uh, something that the everyday user can just jump right in and make use of um, and obviously you can argue with e-drawings and things like that sure you can jump right in and use that um, and visualize so but I think I think the the heart of what VR and AR and all of these things is going to be I don't think is here and right on the right at our fingertips yet and I think we've all said the same thing just in different ways but um, I am very very excited and I you know I say it's not ready with with no disrespect to any of the people who are working on any of this stuff because I think it's it's absolutely critical and it's going to be the next step in how we work with things um, and it's just getting better every day but it's going to be awesome I think when it's when it's a, a system that you can very quickly just step into and make use of immediately, you know, anywhere from everywhere. I think for me, probably the main block is the hardware side of it. Um, I think it's the whole industry is trying to figure out what is the device that we're using this on. Everybody's got a cell phone. You mentioned Google Glass. 
Um, I think Google Glass, I feel like, was just ahead of its time almost. It wasn't, it maybe didn't have enough content. I don't know what the reasons for that disappearing was, but I mean, obviously I wear glasses, so um, it makes a lot of sense to, to, um, to have that you know built into something that I'm already wearing, um, but I think that's the that's the next step is to figure out where are we using all of this stuff. Kind of to Corning's point in 2011, how are we using it? Where is it going? Because um, I think most of the pieces are starting to fall into place. So I am going to be very curious to see see what comes along. So you're waiting for the iPhone experience of this? Yes. That's and correct. Franco and I definitely don't use iPhones, so <laughs> yes. maybe why we have a difference of opinions. We, we like right. it to be a little more adjustable, but I, I can see your point in the fact that it does need to be a little more mainstream, easy, you know, straight shot, because it is right now, you do have to kind of go through a different, couple different paths to get to something super usable for the, you know, the end customer. Yeah, exactly. You kind of have to be into it to make it work, right? Um, yeah. You can't just sort of fall into it. Um, so that's that's where I'm making my call. All right, all right. So what's going to be the next topic? Uh, well, um, we're sliding right into a topic. I think if we stay on our uh, our schedule that we um, have been talking around this, this whole time, I think, and that's um, online configurator kind of things do we want to stick with that topic for next time i think so i think that we got plenty to talk about at, at that uh with that topic and i think it, it blends in with the topic we're talking about uh, fair uh, almost exactly what you were showing with the nvidia uh holodeck right they were they were configuring that car they were using it in, in maybe a training or, or a marketing aspect but changing the color changing you know the the sp uh, showing how the spring gets assembled maybe changing the the, the spring type or the model or, or something like that, changing the rims, all those things, uh, that's already here. Uh, we, SolidWorks and, and, and Dassault already have products that do those things. And, and other companies as well have products that do those things. And I think the next time we can probably start talking about a little bit of it and, and just kind of showing off and seeing what, what's out there. So you're saying I can configure the paint color of the garage? Sure. All right. Yeah. Yeah, and I think um, I think that is probably the intermediate step before the this whole type of system that we've been talking about really hits. Um, I think those types of systems, like you said, are are available and buildable right now, um, and I think they are super super cool. So I'm excited to talk about those and see what we come up with. Awesome. All right. Well, it was a pleasure talking with you, gentlemen. As always, we came yes. up with a mixed result again. As but I, it, was, it was two against one, so <laughs> I mean, I don't one. think there was any mix. You well, that's, <laughs> that's true. That's true. I came up with the wrong answer. You yes. guys came up with the correct answer. <laughs> Fine, I'll accept that. All right, sounds good. Awesome. Well, thank you guys again, and we will see all of you on the next one. All right, take care. Bye. Bye.